Hello and welcome to the Import Export Hub channel everybody, Bogdan here, your not so boring or boring host uh, for the next couple of uh, minutes. I hope that you are all doing great and uh, as usual, without asking you to hit the like and the subscribe buttons, let's dive into today's topic in which I will cover a subject that personally I think it's not really that touched by uh, many or who is somehow discounted when entrepreneurs and business owners uh, plan their export strategy and uh, that is how to finance the export activity and uh, when it comes to financing well basically we have just two sources of uh, financing uh, the first one internal from uh, the owners uh, retain profits or by selling some assets and the second one is the external sources uh, from i don't know share and uh, bond issued to venture capital or bank loans but uh, given the fact that on this channel i'm mostly covering and interested in export uh, import export related activities uh, and topics i will focus on just two external sources of uh, financing uh, the export activity and uh, these are banks and government programs but more on this later on uh, from my point of view guys a good housekeeping rule the golden standard if you want in any activity involving money is to have a stable and uh, reliable cash flow timing both inflows and outflows as uh, cash flow planning can help you defend against problems such as exchange rate fluctuations uh, transmission delays uh, political events or i don't know a slow collection of accounts receivable and don't worry i won't get into the details here on the methods of payment but maybe later on i will uh, try to make a dedicated video for this if i will find the time but uh, generally speaking the most used uh, methods of payment in international transactions are cash in advance which is the most secure uh, type of payment for the exporter and the least one for the importer we have uh, then uh, letter of letters of credit uh, you have a uh, site and term uh, documentary credits or another option which is uh, usual, uh, usually between uh, partners with a long relationship or for i don't know intra-company transactions we have the open account these are the most important ones of course there are others but as i've said earlier maybe i will do a dedicated video on uh, the methods of payment in international transactions so anyway getting back to the presentation here well naturally exporters want to get uh, paid as quickly as possible whereas importers uh, prefer of course uh, to um, uh, defer the payment uh, until they've uh, received or resold the goods and in an ever-growing competitive landscape for export markets for customers really making a sale depends also on the ability to offer attract attractive payment terms which for me personally translates into a very big competitive advantage not only when you're exporting but also when you sell locally and here you can ask any salespeople and uh, one of the first thing uh, that uh, he or she will ask you is how about your payment terms there are a number of uh, financing options available so uh, you should consider and of course uh, suggest the appropriate one both for you and uh, the buyer but uh, personally before making any financing decision you have to pay close attention and ask yourself uh, the following questions do you really need financing in order to make uh, the sale because as i've said earlier there are some cases where i don't know favorable payment terms make a product more competitive so as i've said earlier try to create a competitive advantage by extended your extending sorry your payment terms you should also consider the length of time the product is being financed as the term of the loan required determines for how long you will have to wait before you receive your pay your payment of course from the buyer another thing that comes to mind and of course to consider is to factor in the costs of different methods of financing as um, interest rates and fees vary directly affecting your uh, pricing and uh, profit and lastly another important thing to consider here is the risk associated when uh, with financing 
the transaction and here my advice is to always consider the political and economic stability of uh, the buyer's country coupled with some basic due diligence guys in relation with uh, your partner or i don't know potential partner and here a couple of hundred dollars spent on some financial report could save you thousands later um, i don't know another advice in uh, determining the appropriate uh, credit period would be to know the normal commercial terms from uh, your own industry for internationally traded products in other words uh, benchmarking in terms of uh, payment terms as uh, buyers usually expect to receive the benefits of uh, such term which are not at all negligible and could range from i don't know 30 to 180 dates depending of course on the industry now getting back on how you can uh, finance your export activity guys my advice is to use one of these two options so either a commercial bank either a government assistance program of course, there are other forms of um, financing your export activity like factoring or using export uh, intermediaries like export trading companies uh, or export management companies, at least for the short term financing. But personally, I don't recommend any of those. So in the following slides, guys, I will focus on the first one. So commercial banks and government assistance programs. Now, working with uh, commercial banks shouldn't be too hard because, let's face it, usually it is the same bank uh, you're using to finance your domestic activities. And if you have a long history, a long relationship with the bank, if uh, in the past the, back, the bank uh, extended the, laning, uh, the credit line, it will be familiar with uh, your business, your financial standing, your uh, credit needs, uh, and also the repayment history. And consequently, the bank uh, might be willing here either to raise the overall limit on an existing working capital line of credit in order to expand its scope and uh, to cover also the export transactions. Or another option is to approve a separate and dedicated line specifically adapted to export uh, related transactions that could involve, I don't know, arrangements such as uh, discounting. Uh, together with your bank, uh, my recommendation is to cover topics like export plans, uh, market research, uh, partners, potential partners, of course, the risks involved uh, and uh, applicable fees and commissions, or I don't know, the bank's experience in international transactions, as this could save a lot of time in the future, but also will help uh, build a mutual and beneficial relationship. So that's uh, how I see basically the cooperation between uh, companies and the commercial banks in terms of financing exporting activities. Uh, the second option that I recommend, which unfortunately it's not used a lot if you ask me and it uh, overlaps in scope uh, with the commercial bank, is to use uh, government assistance programs for focusing on export activities as almost all the countries in the world have uh, such tools available in order to assist uh, exporters with uh, their financing needs. And a very important thing to mention here is that uh, these programs are meant to improve exporters' access to credit rather than subsidize the cost of credit at below market levels. And uh, the most uh, important actor in this field is the import-export bank of your own country, usually an independent agency that uh, basically facilitates the exports of uh, goods and services from a particular country through, through tools like, I don't know, export uh, credit insurance and loan guarantees programs to, I don't know, other options like uh, direct loans to exporters or loans to foreign buyers. So the idea here is to always, always be up to date with your local and or uh, national export programs as uh, these um, are constant programs aimed at specific industries from, I don't know, agricultural and rural development to um, high tech industries. So once again, pay close attention and uh, keep a close eye on these programs as there are a lot of opportunities out there, even though in initially the bureaucracy uh, incurred might uh, discourage you. And uh, guys, uh, with this being said, uh, that's all for today. I really hope that you've liked it. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you didn't fall asleep. 
as usual don't forget to hit whatever button you like uh, below this video and until next time keep your business safe thanks